Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday to you. How's everybody doing this morning? Oh, beautiful morning this morning, but it's going to get hot here. I think in the Minnesota area, I've heard as well that it is going to get very hot now over the Labor Day weekend. So make sure you stay hydrated. That's kind of what I was doing this morning. Um, the guys were going out in the field, so getting their lunches ready for them. And Darren takes a big thermos of coffee. I'm like, yeah, that's going to do good today. Um, so I made sure that they had lots of water and uh, made some cinnamon rolls for them, fresh cinnamon rolls in the morning. So that's why I was a little late. Um, and just to let you know, it sounds like uh, next Friday, I either won't be able to do a coffee with Christ or I'll have to do it later. I have a doctor appointment at 845 in the morning in Park River. Um, but uh, like I said, you guys, I'm going to get on here as much as I can. So let's uh, start out with, let's see, I'm going to see what I have here. Um, let's start out with, oh, this is a really, really neat, um, act of kindness. So, um, my friend Tamara has been moving and she has just had, um, so many people, um, step in with acts of kindness to help her. Um, and I just feel really bad that you know, she's moving during harvest because we aren't able, you know, to help her that much. But God works in wonderful ways. Um, so um, first off, you know, she's been selling a lot of her her <coughs> stuff, you know. Oh, goodness, Kobe Dopes. I don't know. Okay, come here. Come on. He always needs to get up on the chair next to me, you know. So, um, but anyway... She uh, sold a, her wood stove to a gal from Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And um, um, when she came to pick it up, she had painted um, some, some rocks for her. Um, she said that she asked the Lord which one to bring me. And uh, she said that uh, the Lord kind of guided her on which ones to bring her. Um, and then I'll tell you the next story, and then I'll tell you what The Rock said. Um, so after the lady left and everything, uh, she found another couple of rocks in her wash tub that had flowers in them. And she says, this just blows me away because we never discussed what's really going on in her life. She says, I really believe she's an angel from heaven. And so now let me get into, um, I couldn't take pictures of like everything. So let me get on there and uh, tell you what the, uh, oh wait, no, no, no. It would be in the Texas here. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. There we go. I think it's this one. Okay. Yeah, so the first rocks that she gave her is, um, it says it's got a picture of a heart on it. It's broken. And it says, um, God heals the brokenhearted, Psalms 147. And then the next one is, um, this is yours to keep or pass on for an act of kindness. And those are the first two that she received. And then the ones that she found <laughs> in her flower pot says, um, it's got a picture of a balloon going up in the air and it says, let it go. And then the next one says, and choose joy. Is that not cool? Um, so Tamara's been going through a lot um, in her life. Uh, she just went through a divorce and and she's moving um, up to Wahala, where my new church is. And she had just tons of antiques and stuff that she needed to, you know, get rid of. So she's been going.
going through everything, putting stuff on sell and swap, had a garage sale, and her life's just been absolutely crazy. So, you know what? I believe that that was an angel, too, coming down to say, hey, God's got this, you know, and give her a little bit of peace. Um, so I thought that was amazingly, amazingly cool. Okay, let's see what else I have here. Um, my friend from um, back in Holding Ford, Minnesota, shares a big thank you to everybody who supported her daughter, Mercedes, um, along the way as she prepares to head to Florida this December for um, dance. Um, some of those that supported her with the fundraising events often purchased and just asked her to donate the product time after time to, you know, somebody else. There's been so many um, times we've donated food items per their request. Sometimes it's to families that could use a little extra unexpected surprise. And sometimes it's a place um, like, um, well, anywhere out there, of any, you know, anybody that could donate. Um, so here's just one of the latest. We delivered three boxes of candy bars to Serenity, Serenity Village. I'm guessing that that is a assisted living. Uh, Mercedes chose this place because her great grandma Esther uh, used to live there and she wanted to donate the candy bars to the residents. So we made it happen. Thank you for your support. How cool is that? So there you go, you guys. You, uh, all these fundraisers going around for kids. Um, if you can, go ahead and buy something, even if you don't need it, and donate it, because somebody does need it. Okay. Um, so, uh, we are out in the field, and it's go time, and um, I just want to say a few thank yous to our friend uh, Richard, who is going to be staying with us till hopefully till we're done, because he is just such great help. And you know what? He just brings uh, life and spirit wherever he goes. Um, even if somebody's having a bad day um, or, you know, frustrated out in the field or whatever, he just always brings smiles and laughter. And so I really want to thank Richard for that. So, um, okay. So for prayers, I have... Our friend Wanda um, from up in the Big Pemina Wahala area um, received a text from her husband's cousin Jackie who was asking for prayers for her nephew who was seriously injured. Uh, I don't know the nephew's age. I don't know what happened, but it doesn't matter because God knows. Um, so prayers for um, Gary's, um, um, let's see, Gary's cousin's nephew. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, let's see what else I have here. Prayers for Janet, who I'm going to try to go visit later on today. Um, because um, she had, God, I can't remember if it was knee or hip surgery. Sorry about that, Janet. Um, but she is recovering. And so um, prayers for uh, continued healing to Janet. Prayers go out to Haley Christensen and Tanner Worvin as uh, they're getting married tomorrow. And we have um, rehearsal tonight. And then prayers go out to the Sanford family um, on the burial of their mom tomorrow. Um, and then also for the Zach slash Johnson family uh, for... Um, in the death of their mom, Karen Zach, and her funeral will be a week from today. So, um, and prayers for everyone else um, in our minds and hearts that aren't mentioned today. And I pray every night that God wraps his loving arms around everyone um, that's going through something, whether it's happy or sad. We all need his arms wrapped around us. So... Okay, so with that, um, let's see. Let us, wait a minute, what is that one? Let us uh, pray. 
Dear God, everywhere we walk, let it be on your path. Everywhere we see, let it be through your eyes. Everything we do, let it be your will. For every hardship we face, let us place it in your hands. Every emotion I feel, or we feel, let it be your spirit moving in us. Everything we seek, let us find it in your love. Our dear God, I th or we thank you for this day. I ask not to know where we are going, but only to know and feel in the depths of our hearts and soul that you are with us, that you are guiding us, that we are safe in the protection of your loving care. In Jesus' name, we offer ourselves to you. Amen. Amen. Um, I wasn't sure if she wanted me to mention this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Um, prayers for my, my mom, who has um, a lot of doctor appointments coming up and some big decisions to make. Please pray that God guides her um, in the decision and the direction that he wants to go with her treatment. All right, my friends, <clears throat> I did this one uh, last year, but it's a great reminder as we are changing seasons here. Um, and as we all know, in the Midwest, uh, excuse me, you guys, a cat just clawing at the door out in the garage. Uh. The animals want to be out, but it is really getting warm out there. So anyway, um, uh, as we kind of move into fall, which is my favorite season, uh, I love the colors. I love the, the fresh air. I, I like it even more than spring. Um, and, uh, you know, throughout each year in the Midwest here, we, we experience different seasons, summer, fall, winter, spring, right? And, of course, there's always some seasons in between that we really don't have a name for. Um, but also, during our lives, we are constantly reminded that there is a season and time for everything, right? Life is constantly evolving and changing. The norm of daily life as we know it today will gradually shift and eventually look completely different. And the older we get, the more we see this, right? So throughout our lives, we will experience many personal seasons of change. So we, with this, I mean, we experience um, seasons of trials, of joy, sadness, mourning, laughter, and of endings and new beginnings. And during these seasons um, of change, it can also, it can you know, maybe bring us anxiety, turn our head into spaghetti, as I always say. Um, but it's very important that, um, that we don't lose our faith and that we remain positive. Um, positive that this is all in God's plan. And so remember that no... Um, human work here on earth is eternal, okay? Um, our activities, whether building up or tearing down, uh, they change with every season we go through. And we all experience change and transition in our lives at one time or another. Um, sometimes life is exciting. Sometimes it is dull. But however... We need to know, um, because we hear it in scripture, that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. Um, and we should look at these seasons with our glass, as I always say, half full instead of half empty. There can be so much beauty in change. And even in letting 
go of things that we're so used to. If we look on the bright side, um, and the and we can see the good news in every season of our lives, in every change, good or bad. And here's the cool thing. God always remains the same, and he promises to be with us through every season we experience. Now, true beauty, though, we need to know, um, is found when we live in the present, okay? Now, the past is gone, okay? And they maybe have good memories or bad memories, but it's gone. And the future, my friends, is never guaranteed. So all we have is now. And so we should live for today and make each moment count. And make each day beautiful in its very own season. Whether we're experiencing, uh, experiencing joy or sorrow. And, you know, these seasons are going to come and go, Okay. But like I said, God will always remain constant. We never have to worry about that. He will remain constant in trials and suffering as well as in our joy and happiness. And God has our best interest at heart. He is our rock in which we stand, who strengthens us and steadies us as we look at him. And you can find proof of that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. So always, always, my friends, keep your eyes on him. Remember what happened when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus? He started sinking, right? But when the, he put his eyes on Jesus, on Jesus, he could walk on water. So throughout every season, God is showing us more of him, okay? So uh, whether it's a good, we're going through a good season or a bad season, um, every season he's showing us more of him. Now, here are a few Bible verses that will help us remember that God remains the same even when the seasons of our life change, okay? Write these down. Genesis 8, verse 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart. Yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So that is where our faith comes in. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Psalm 104, verse 19. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never, ever ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And of course, the one that we're all very familiar with is Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear or tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Life, my friends, is made up of so many different seasons, but each one of us, each one of them help us learn and grow into the person God has made us to be. 
and not just the typical seasons you think of like like I said uh, summer fall winter spring um, because obviously like I said if we live in an area such as the Midwest um, we go through these every year and each season is unique in its beauty um, and in that we do get to experience um, that uniqueness and beauty and the goodness of God's creation um, that transforms right before our eyes. And we should do the same with the different seasons we experience in our lives. A lot of us don't like change, and especially the older we get. Uh, we just don't like change. We don't like to learn new things, etc. But nothing is constant in life for long. Some of us would rather stay on the positive side of things, you know, laughing, loving, having peace, etc. Um, but as long as we live in a world of conflict like we do, uh, we must accept the fact that we cannot live without unchanging circumstances. But however, these seasons of change should bring us hope. Because we know that God is in control and everything is designed to be good in its season. Now, um, as I mentioned, different seasons in our lives include trial and triumph, heartache and joy, etc. Our God created these different seasons so that we would... Uh, learn to rely on him. He wants us to rely on him. God is faithful. And in these seasons, he is molding us into who we are meant to be. He is the creator of all things good. He allows everything to work together to achieve his master plan. And you know, as I always mention, the, de the devil is alive and well out there, you guys. Um, you know, and and he is going to try um, to throw some bad seasons on you. But if we rely on God and bring it to God, um, he brings us through these terrible seasons. The devil um, doesn't stand a chance against our God. You know, and it is okay. We aren't giving in to the devil um, if we mourn and it's it's even necessary to do so sometimes uh, we have to allow ourselves to feel the weight of the brokenness of this world um, but then never lose sight of the fact that God is with us we bring it to him he is with us and he remains faithful in the midst of our grief and pain and suffering he has laughter coming for us you guys on the other side it is through faith in Jesus Christ that God can make our lives beautiful. But remember, he does it in his own time. And that's where our patience and faith comes in, which is so hard for so many, but keep working at it. The only true and constant thing in life, my friends, is God. He has beautifully orchestrated every part of our lives down to the very minute. While, of course, we may never understand why God would allow things to happen as they do, he knows what he is doing. That's what I always think about right now with all the changes we see in the world. I mean, some of this stuff I just, don't get. I mean, to me, I look and I'm like, this is black and white. Why are we allowing certain things to happen? I just, you know, don't get it. But then I remind myself, I don't have to get it. It's not my place to get it. God knows what's going on with this world. Okay. And, and he has a plan. Okay. And we just need to trust in that. Um, let's see, where am I now? God is in control. I always know that. And has set a time for everything in accordance with his purpose for our lives and for this world. 
It is all according to his divine plan. And everything he does is for our good and his glory. And like I said, you know, when we look at things, you know, we, we, we say, how can, how can this be for our good? And how can this be for our glory? Can't read the mind of God, you guys. So give it up and just have faith, have patience. And know that he knows what's going on with our individual lives and with this world. Um, it may be that with all this stuff going on in our world right now, it may be that we are preparing for the, the end of time on earth here. It may be. So be ready. Okay, but it's not for us to understand or figure out. Just go to God every day, hand everything good and bad over to him and have faith that he knows and that he has a plan. So during our seasons of change, it is our job to, to take time and listen for God. Listen to him and trust in his timing. That's it. It is our call to remain faithful even when we doubt or even when we want to give up. Don't doubt. Don't give up, my friends. Not only do we experience, like I said, the changes of the seasons of the year like we do, but we also experience tons of emotional and spiritual seasons in our lives. They bring about good and not so good changes. If we are not deeply grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ, the changes are going to overtake us and we're going to go nuts. Okay? When these changes descend upon our lives, we must look to Jesus for the answer because he is the author and finisher of our faith. And you can find that in Hebrews 12, verse 2. Jesus has always and will always, he has always been there and will always be there for us. All we must do is trust in him, for he will never, ever change. Amen. So um, my sermon this weekend is going to be on excuse me, Matthew 16, 21 through 28. And um, it, where it talks about, um, you know, Jesus telling his disciples to pick up their crosses and follow him. And what does that mean? You know, how do we and how have we interpreted that? Um, and it's so much more, I think, than um, what we have seen it as. Um and I'm just going to tell you this, or actually, I'll just ask you, um, when, you know, when he, when he tells us to do that, we automatically think that it's, um, you know, uh, all bad, you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say here, but, um, the picking up the cross and following him is is just about um i don't know how to explain it what am i trying to say um that it's uh just dealing with our bad stuff okay and it is it is but it's way more than that um because you see back in the day and i don't want to say too much here but back in the day the cross was not looked upon as we look at it today Okay, I'm just going to kind of leave it on that. Um, if someone was told to pick up the cross, um, that pretty much meant that they were going to die. They were going to be crucified because that's what they did on crosses. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth than um, on Monday. Okay, uh, Pretty interesting, I thought. So it'll be more of a teaching lesson than a per se sermon. Um, but I, I, I found my research to be very interesting and put a piece that I hope together that 
that you will enjoy. So anyway, with that, let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you with and this whole entire world with his favor and give us all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. It's a new and fresh day, my friends. Make each and every minute count. Don't live in yesterday and tomorrow is not promised. Live in today. Well, you guys have a great Labor Day weekend. My Labor Day weekend will not change, so we'll go ahead and uh, have coffee with Christ on Monday. If you're busy camping or whatever you're doing, just come back and, and watch it at another time. And uh, make sure you share the video on your Facebook page so that we can share the word of the Lord with as many people as we can. So have a great weekend. Um, until Monday, God bless and bye for now.